G'day, welcome to Brewpeg. We are turning a sunken fishing trawler into a global expedition and research boat. Part of that is building a tiny, tiny aluminium dinghy. So this is Jess's little electric dinghy. So we've got most of it tacked together at this stage. What we need to do is a couple of things. We've chopped off this corner and did a bit of a chamfer on it. We've got to do exactly the same on this edge. You can see this is quite a sharp bend here. We need to round it off a bit like that so it doesn't punch holes and things if we crash. So we'll get into that this morning. We'll cut that out. Next thing we've got to do this morning is also trim off these tubes. So at the moment you can see they're basically just a flat cut straight across the back. So we're going to be angling these down um, just so that they look a bit pretty. So we'll get that done as well this morning. Once that's finished we'll peel these tubes off the dinghy um, and that allows us to uh, essentially seam weld all of the, the joins um, and then we'll weld the thing back onto the hull and we should have a completed boat. I say all of that like it's a three minute job. It's been like three weeks of swearing trying to actually figure out how to get this thing to work. So um, hopefully we'll have a boat at the end of the day. I found the system a while back. How do we get a dead straight line down here? Um, and one of the ways we found it was by basically using a square. We've got a line on the top of the tube up here. Get a square on that line, do a you know inch and a half long mark, and then mark at the bottom of the square. Move the top down to the bottom. Draw, mark, mark draw, mark, mark, and just keep working your way down. And that's why on the front here you can see there's marks, one there, one there, one there, etc. That's us working all the way down to get the line um, for the uh, so that we can do this other side over here. It worked really well. Um, it's not very fast, that's for sure, but it definitely works really well to get that line. Seems to be pretty accurate, so that's the way that we just um, decided to carry on with it. If I was doing this for a job, I'd probably try and figure out some sort of tool that I can just, like a perfectly cut piece of tube that I just clip over top and draw and draw. But for a one-off, this will do. So you're just actually doing that straight? Yeah. That's, oh yeah, that makes life simple, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Lock all the shot up. Yeah, so that, that one was just it. So we've got a line that goes around the whole boat that we, it's kind of like our source of truth. Yeah. And then, yeah, just straight down and straight down. Keep it square, because mainly we wanted this front one to be perfectly square. So that's the, the goal. It doesn't have to measure perfect, it has to look perfect. Hmm. I hope your source of truth doesn't tell you too much stuff you don't like to hear. <laughs> it's definitely worthwhile doing cutting that off, I think, isn't it? Yeah. It's an easy enough modification, you don't have to line anything up and you end up with a boat that doesn't chop stuff up. Mm. Trev's just asked, what's wrong with the piece that we just cut out as a template? I reckon it's going to be pretty near bang on, so yeah, we'll mark it up, we'll cut it out. Yep. <laughs> yeah, a bit of sanding and I think that'll be right.
So with that front tacked up, the tubes are just about done. The last little bit we have to do before we can peel them off the hull is clean up these back ends. Um, figure out our design on the back. We've got to put a 45 on the back so that they don't look so ugly. Um, and uh, yeah, once we figured that bit out, we can peel these tubes off. So you can see Trev has gone around and marked all of these. Every five centimeters, there's a, a mark going right the way around the tube. So we'll go through, we'll draw out our lines, and then we'll start chopping off these back end tubes. The plan. This is a piece of offcut from when we did one of the tubes at the front and that, this angle at the back here is 57.5 degrees roughly was what it was supposed to be cut at. We're going to clean that up make sure that it's nice and straight and true, that's easy enough to do on the bench and we're going to use that as a template so our back tube angles are going to be 57.5 rather than 45 degree cuts. We'll untack these welds and that leaves us with essentially a tube that's slightly flexible. We'll crack it open a little bit and we'll be able to just slide it straight over top of this tube and then just draw the line around where we need it to be. So now that we've got our, our cut out, you can sort of see that's pretty flat directly across there. I reckon that's going to work a treat. So let's get, we'll get a ratchet strip around it and we'll just nip it back up, eh? Trying to mark on the top of each tube that's parallel with the back of the transom. So using the angle line here, know that we're going to be basically ending the top of the tube at exactly the same point on both sides. We're currently trying to figure out how to get an accurate measurement 100mm up from the bottom of these tubes so we're going to clamp on a piece of 50mm angle and that'll give us like a level line that we can start working from. So we've got those tubes cut off at the back, we're going to now bend up some panels to go on the top of that and we'll weld it on. We've got some off-cut piece of aluminium, 2mm aluminium that we had for something else, I think it was a battery box or something that was trimmed up and bent out of it. Um, this is a bit of leftover. We've got some angle, iron, uh, angle aluminium that was actually donated by Trev and we've got a big lump of 16mm uh, mild steel that was my template for building the pentagraph hinges. So with all of that we're going to jazz up a little bender using the bench. Lovely, look at that. Getting close. That'll do. What we want to do on the tube, so this is the left side tube, we're going to cut a square in here or a rectangle in here and we're going to push a battery box in. Now, this is our battery box. So what we need to do is insert the battery box into a tube like this onto a flat piece of alloy like we've got and then essentially mark the shape that is created at the back. We need to create two of these per battery box and weld them onto the sides and then that's going to form our watertight battery compartment that sits on the inside of each of these tubes. So 
these are our marks for the battery box. She do not fit ish. Very nice. <laughs> Getting there. Yeah. Alright, let's make that fit. One of the cool bits about having aluminium tubes on your dinghy is that you can stick batteries inside them rather than down by your feet. So another day on our dinghy build. It's a cracker day today, there's virtually no wind so we're going to be able to do some good welding today hopefully and um, yeah it's stinking stinking hot so we had heaps of rain last night like I don't know probably 25 50 mils of rain something like that so what's that one to two inches of rain um, over the space of a couple of hours. Um, welcome to the tropics in Australia and uh, yeah everything's as muggy as this morning so it's probably I don't know a good 28 degrees already I'd say and uh, it's probably going to get a bit hotter than that so everything's pretty hot and hot and muggy but uh, we'll press on we've got the second battery box to put in um, Trev's turned up he's given his hand today The design for the battery box is pretty simple. Um, we just got this shape here pressed up. It's basically just a piece of aluminium with a couple of right angles in it. So what we're going to do is stick it onto a piece of flat. You see down here, the tube's already started. We'll slide a tube over top. And then if you have a look down there, you can sort of see that gives us the curve that we need to cut. So we've got to do a flat, um, you know, three-sided sort of square, and then we're going to do a radius front edge on it. So with that, we've got to do four of those. Once we've got those cut, we can start tacking the boxes together and we'll get those fitted into the tube. All right, let's cut that out and that's pretty much our template. So now that we've figured out essentially how to make it, we're gonna use this first one that we created as our template and we'll just go through, mark them out, cut out three more of them. We'll tack up the battery boxes and they should be ready to fit into the tubes. Part of the reason that we're sinking the battery boxes up into the tubes on either side here, one, one on the left, one on the right, is because this is an electric boat, we obviously need batteries to power it. Because this is an aluminium boat, we're not limited by the same things that you are with an inflatable dinghy. So inflatable dinghy, obviously you can't stick anything inside the tubes. You're gonna have a battery or a fuel tank or whatever sitting in the middle down, down by your feet somewhere. We don't have those same limitations. So what we're going to do is clean the inside of this boat right up by getting rid of the batteries. We're gonna stick them inside the tubes. We're gonna stick flotation inside the tube so if anything ever ruptures, if we run it aground and rupture a tube, the boat physically can't sink. It's gonna have flotation inside the tubes. And then we're also gonna internally run the wiring so that the wiring isn't able to be kicked, booted, or any of that sort of stuff. It also means that we can protect it from moisture and things a lot better if we've got it inside a sealed tank. So we're gonna be running our electrical setup down the back end of the boat. Uh, for the outboard to basically clip into that positive and negative power supply.
probably close enough to be able to fit it, eh? Yeah. It's never gonna go in there. It's How much on. we gotta take off? It's upside down. <laughs> These are the batteries. And they're a, they're an, a sealed gel battery. Plug thing out. Right. So it's a sealed gel battery. Yeah, sealed gel battery. Um, 12 volt, 60 amp hour, because we need 24 volt, 60 amp hour to run that motor. So what the plan is, uh, that's the top there. So it sits that way in the boat. So that's our battery cavity. So there's kind of plenty of room. I actually made them bigger than I needed to, didn't I? There's heaps of room. Um, so now we just have to figure out how we're going to actually strap them down into the boat. I was thinking... You, you can put a, a, a fair sort of bat, uh, rubber pad in the bottom. Yeah. I was thinking of like a strap. So I want everything non-conductive. So I don't want any stainless or anything like that in there. So I was thinking of like some sort of, um, you know, the seatbelt webbing type strap that a nylon or whatever it is. I was thinking of that sort of thing, ratchet it up tight so that it's not going to ever conduct on anything. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You just need a loop at the back, like a, yeah. a piece of pipe about that long, just weld on yeah. the back so yeah. you can hook it. Yeah, exactly. So before we get too far carried away with these battery boxes, we actually need to start welding up the hull. The reason being is because in order to run cabling and conduit, we need to have the foam inside the boat because we that's going to determine where the cabling is actually going to sit. Before we do that, we need to have all of the tubes welded up. So we're going to go and buzz some welds around the tubes and then if we have time, we'll peel these tubes off the hull and completely seam weld the bottom of them as well. We've got most of the uh, top part of the welds done. Um, we've welded them up essentially. What we need to do now is peel the tubes off the bottom section of the hull so that we can go around and fully seam weld all of the inside joins and stuff. The stuff we can't get to when the hull is actually intact on these tubes. So we'll go and do that uh, and then we'll flapper them off because we're not going to be able to get to them again and then we'll get into, um, yeah, get into welding the hull on. First impressions. Yeah, gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they look awesome. I don't know why I didn't think they'd be that chunky. But... Yeah, I didn't think they'd be that chunky. Yeah. You've got to though, eh? You can't have a pinhole or anything. Well, I just figured belt the shit out of it and then bust some back. Yeah. That's my plan. And, and the wind's perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, the wind's really good. There's bugger all at the moment. How do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. Order of that 
We ordered it. <laughs> the wind's been so bad in the last few days, really quite blowy around and changing directions. And So we didn't quite get the hull fully welded today, which was what I was sort of aiming for. Um, nevertheless, we got probably 80% of the tubes welded up, maybe even more, 90% of the tubes sort of all welded together the way that we wanted. Next step, uh, we're going to get the uh, bottom of the hull, stick it back on, and we'll weld the hull to the tubes. Okay, live, live in eight minutes. <laughs> Good morning, 1.30 a.m. Pacific Coast Time, Red Bluff, California, Chris Wallace. So now that we've got the bottom placed onto the hull, you can sort of see Trev's going around and marking where that transom is. We need to buff that with the stainless wheel. So you can sort of see the bottom sits mostly flush against the hull. We just have to do a little bit of trimming. So we'll do a bit of persuading around this edge here with the um, large persuasion stick, knock that down. And then there'll be a couple of bits like right down in there, we may have to add a little bit of extension, a little bit of alloy in just to join the hull to the tubes. But we're just about ready to start tacking that hull back on now. How does it feel knowing that your dinghy's just about welded together? Yeah, pretty amazing. <laughs> it looks amazing. It's a pretty neat little shape, eh? Yeah. I can't believe we're going to have such a strong little dinghy. Yeah. Just for the run around, you know? Yeah. 
you know, to suggest strongly that it goes down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't want me to fill that up as well. <laughs> no, I think that's asking a bit much. That's super flat. Sicker there's the answer. <laughs> so, yeah, so once you bring it down, it should flatten out. So we'll tack it and push it down as we go. I might put a little extension in these because it's a wee bit high. Do you know what I mean? I'll cut a little bit of sandwich on it. Is it the same on both sides? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, it's where the tube sort of goes in. Yeah, we were thinking we would have to put a plate on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I'm going to try and um, wear it up that back end. Yeah. Just to make sure my plate will work. I don't know if it's good. Where's the time? 7.39. I love that. Yeah, it's hard day. I'm hanging in the sunshine. <laughs> Now I don't want these to stick out too far from the side of the boat, but I reckon that's probably a decent enough height. So my plan is just to make a little jig like that to tell me where to cut it. So about there. So this is quite heavy pipe. It's um probably a good three mil, I'd say, something like that. Maybe two and a half, three mil. Um, there's a reason I use heavy wall pipe. Ease of welding. So when you're trying to weld like say a 1.6 mil pipe, um, it's really difficult to weld it without blowing holes and they're not really that strong, they're easy to bend, all that sort of stuff. I want this dinghy to be able to be thrown around without you know, damaging it. We're gonna take it to Antarctica, it's almost certainly gonna drive over some ice. It needs to be strong enough to handle all of that. Heavy wall pipe means that I can weld it on with a decent heat to a, another piece of pipe below it that's quite thick. Um, it's going to be nice and strong. If we need to, we can tow the boat from there. We can tow things from that area. So, yeah, that's why. Durable, strong, and easy to weld. There are times in every um, channel's life when they do something that they just swear about. I've just deleted like, what was it, 60 gig of footage from this morning. So um, I'll do a quick recap of what we've just lost. This morning we are putting handles on the front of the dinghy. We're doing that on both sides and the reason we have to do that is so that we can um, yeah, basically tow the dinghy, lift the dinghy, all that sort of stuff, but I have to get the welding finished before I can do the wiring and the insulation that goes inside these tubes. 
let me show you these handles. So, these handles, it's basically a piece of um, aluminium sort of bent up in a shape, and then we've just got a piece of flat that we've cut into a circle, welded onto the bottom, in beautiful detail. The camera work was just magical, but um, obviously all of that's gone now. So those are doublers. They're gonna get welded onto the side like so. Stick that up in there like that. And the reason we need to put these doublers on is because this is two millimeters. This here is thick wall. I like using thick wall pipe because it's really strong, rigid, rigid great to weld, all that sort of stuff. Not gonna you know, wobble. Because if we weld it straight onto this, we're eventually gonna end up cracking the hull. So we need to put a doubler on that spreads the load over a much bigger area. So that's what these um, circular plates are that we got at the end of these. Now, where is the other one? This is the other one. I might have some footage from this on the other camera, but basically this is a piece of straight pipe with some 90 degrees that we ended up uh, cutting out of a piece that was bent for something else. Found all of this at the scrapyard and we've made our two handles out of this. Now that we've got that two second recap done, it's time to start welding these handles onto our dinghy. So that's how they sort of turned out. Go right up, you can sort of see reasonable. Certainly not the best weld in the world, but that will absolutely do. It's a bracket, it ain't coming loose. So two things are kind of standing out for me right now. I've run out of gas, so I can't do any more welding. Um, however, I haven't actually pressure tested the tubes and I need to pressure test the tubes before I go and fit all the insulation. However, I can do, so I can't do any welding, I can't do any pressure testing because if I find a leak, I can't fix it, so there's no point. Um, I will do that before I finish up these tubes. However, one of the things that I can do is get all of the wiring done. So I have to build some plates that are, well, I suppose I call them isolation plates. They basically make sure that the DC current can't in any way touch the aluminium. So I'll get stuck into those and show you how I'm gonna make them. What we need to do inside each of these battery um, areas, we've got to bring a positive and a negative through from the, behind the battery and bring it over onto the terminal. Now the cables have got to run down through the tubes and they've got to come out towards the back. So where this, transom welders there's going to be essentially a plate just beside it and that's going to be either positive or negative doesn't really matter at this stage but there's going to be um, a plate essentially sticking out of either side that our power flows through now one of the things that we have to do is isolate it from the aluminium so DC, al DC electricity is the fastest way to make aluminium evaporate so I'll show you my little trick I was really struggling to figure out how am I going to do some sort of plug for the um, for the outboard to essentially allow me to plug the outboard in and out whenever we want to take it on and off. Um, couldn't do it. So it's 65 amps at 24 volts is what this outboard needs. Um, now that I rang probably maybe five, six different suppliers um, trying to find a waterproof DC plug that can handle um, sort of say 70, 75 volts or less. Um, sorry, 70, 75 amps or so. Um, the trouble is is that um, I found one supplier that had two options. One was an $1,800 stainless plug that they use on shipping containers. Didn't really want to do that. Um, and the other one was a $35 plug, but it had to, the cable had to split into three, and each pin could handle a bit over 20 amps each. Um, and then you bring it back out of the three and, and into a single cable, so it sounds a bit sort of hodgepodge, and even then, the plug is at the upper limit of what it can manage. So I came up with this idea that's about two dollars and incredibly simple. Plastic cutting boards. These things are going to work absolutely perfect as an isolation block. So I'll show you how I'm going to get the power through them. I need four isolation plates. So we're going to cut. Let me think about this. Two of them are bigger than the others. So that's our maximum dimension. Righto. Let's get those cut. So now we got our four little squares cut up. I'll put it in the vise. Yes, I've got a vise now, thanks to Dennis. That was about centered, isn't it? Give that a shot. So I'm drilling a seven and a half mil hole because I want to put an eight millimeter bolt into it and I want it to be tight. The 
Lovely. That's exactly what we're after. Grab one of these guys. What we're creating is a waterproof, non-conductive means to get electricity through the aluminium. So, take a lug, put it in our fresh 7.5mm hole. This is an 8mm bolt. Screw that in. With that you've created a method to be able to get your electricity from one side to the other. This can be sickered onto your aluminium and it's completely non-conductive and safe for the alloy. With these plates built, we can now start fitting them into the boat. Lovely. So you can sort of see it'll sit like that with sicker and whatever holding it all together in that edge there, nice and isolated and it's pretty easy to mount stuff on there without it touching any aluminium. And then on the inside you've got this. So we'll hold that in position. You can kind of see it's just sitting there nice and away from everything, not going to cause any drama and really easy to isolate. The way the cabling's run, so we'll have a, in this case we're having a positive over in that corner. It's going to run up to the battery box and it'll the positive will clip onto one terminal on the battery. There'll be another cable that goes from the opposite terminal all the way around the front tubes and then over into this battery compartment here and then down the back, this hole here, that's going to be our negative. It just started a trawler next to us. It's awesome. They basically pulled the boat in and I don't know what it's been three three days complete main engine swap um yeah they had one engine out sitting on the ground the new one beside it they were swapping some parts over a couple of days ago and i just heard it first fire up just then there we go cat 3406 fired up You just saw me stick the conduit into the boat. Um, that's the dry fit of the start of our electrical fit out. Some of the last things that we need to do, pressure test the hulls. So we've got some bungs in the back end of the boat now. They're gonna help us pressure test. Battery boxes, they're going in, welded. Trev's working on a template for a step that's going up the front of the boat. And then we're getting our electrics inside the battery boxes and hooked up to the motor. And getting all this done means that we can get into sea trials. Blue, the sun is high. I'm sitting here.